So at Qualcomm's recent Snapdragon Summit, not only did it announce a new mobile flagship processor, that was the Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5, it also announced a new laptop processor. So that's the Snapdragon X2 Elite, and these are designed for Windows 11 PCs. Well, we now have all the specifications and we have some performance data. Now, Qualcomm has been making processors for Windows PCs for quite a long time. Now, in fact, 2017 was really its first serious entry into the Windows uh, compatible laptop processor market. And when we talk about Windows compatible, we don't mean this is x86 compatible. It's not like an Intel or an AMD, but it worked with Microsoft to port Windows over to 64-bit ARM. And in 2023, it announced its first custom CPU core specifically designed for Windows laptops with the Snapdragon X Elite. Now, these processors use Qualcomm's custom CPU design following its acquisition of Nuvia, and they are based, as I said, on the ARM instruction set architecture. That means they're not designed by ARM, they are ARM 64-bit compatible. Now, Qualcomm has now announced the successor to the original Snapdragon X Elite, and it's called the Snapdragon X2 Elite. So what is the story so far with these Orion custom CPU cores? Well, the Snapdragon X Elite, as I said, was announced in October 2023. It had the first generation of Orion uh, CPU cores. There were 12 cores and the Adreno X1 GPU, and there were four variations of that processor available. Then we got the Snapdragon X Plus, so that's dealing at a slightly different uh, market, slightly lower price. So that had the same Orion Gen 1 CPU core, but now eight or 10 cores. And again, there were four varieties of that processor. Then we had just the plain Snapdragon X, so not Plus, not Elite, Snapdragon X. That was announced earlier this year, and again with the Orion Generation 1 with just eight CPU cores, and there was just one variety of that one. And now we've got the Snapdragon X2 Elite, so September 2025, Orion Generation 3. So the Generation 2 went into mobile processors. We didn't have a generation two for laptops. Now the generation three has gone into the latest flagship mobile processor and into the laptop processor. 12 or even up to 18 cores and the new Adreno X2 GPU. And there are two different types of that processor available. But there's also now the X2 Elite Extreme, again using the Orion three generation CPU. And that's got 18 cores uh, plus the X2 uh, GPU, and that, that's the only one available, the Elite Extreme. So here's a table showing the Snapdragon X2 lineup. So the total number of cores we can see here on the left, so there's eight, two of them with 18 cores, one with 12. And then the uh, Prime cores, that's the higher performance ones, clocked at the higher clock speed, we can see 12 of those in the first ones, and then six in the third var variety. And then we can see the different clock speeds, so 4.4 gigahertz, 4 gigahertz, and 4 gigahertz, and more importantly, the boost frequency. So the Snapdragon X2 Elite Extreme has got 18 cores, 12 prime cores. It runs at a base speed of 4.4, but if you're just using one or two prime cores, then they can peak up to five gigahertz. If you start to use three prime cores, then it will drop down to 4.4 gigahertz for all of them. And then it's 4.7 gigahertz for the second variation and 4.7 gigahertz for that third variation. And they've all got at least six performance cores and then 3.6 gigahertz in that high and extreme one, 3.4 gigahertz in the lower one. And again, notice this lower one here got less cash. So 53 megabytes here, total cash on those upper two ones. And here it's 34 megabytes. And then again, difference in the clock speed of the GPU and a difference again in the bandwidth of the memory. So they've got three different variations, difference in the number of cores, difference in the peak clock speed, difference in the amount of cache, difference in the amount of uh, the maximum speed of the GPU, difference in the maximum bandwidth of the memory. You basically, they're different price points. They're gonna be in different laptops uh, at, at different price ranges. Of course, these are also aimed for uh, intelligent PCs, Copilot Plus maybe, um, Microsoft would name them. So they got the Qualcomm Hexagon uh, NPU 80 tops, AI acceleration for media editing, multimedia content generation, uh, and 64-bit NPU architecture with increased memory uh, access. As I said, powers the Copilot Plus PCs from Microsoft. Other few things to note about these. 
You can put up to 128 gigabytes of memory in all of these. However, the extreme ones support more than 128 gigabytes and there'll be a 48 gigabytes of RAM in any extreme laptop. The other ones can go down to different levels depending on what the OEM is looking for. We can also see differences here in the memory. As I mentioned, they all support dual PCI 5. They also support UFS version 4. Uh, they're all built on a 3 nanometer process. Other things to note, they can also support 4K, Display Point 1.4, up to three displays at 4K at 144 hertz or 5K at 60 hertz. So again, that'd be to take your laptop and plug it into some external monitors as well. And look here, lots of different codecs supported uh, H.265, uh, AV1. You can do things in parallel. You can have an 8K encode at 30 frames a second while you're having an 8K decode at 60 frames a second. So, so big support there for a variety of different uh, codecs for both encode and decode. So we're getting onto the benchmarks. There are some different numbers available. Now I'm just going to show you these on, for example, speedometer 3.1. I don't really have very many other numbers for other devices running that. So you can test this against your PC and see what kind of speed you're getting. Same again here for Jetstream 2. You can test that against your PC and see what you're getting. Uh, 3D Mark running the Steel Nomad Lite, 41 frames a second there. But the important thing is, of course, we want Geekbench. So here are the Geekbench numbers I've been able to get together. So we've got three different Mac uh, models here, and then we've got the uh, X2 Elite Extreme. So the M3 Max with 16 cores got a single core score of 3,128. And then we've got the M4 with 10 cores, 3,700. Got the M4 Max with 14 cores, 3,900. And we can see the X2 Extreme Elite with 18 cores tops all of those at 4,050. Thing to note, these are Qualcomm reference device laptops. These aren't laptops from Samsung or LG or Sony or whoever. These are laptops from uh, Qualcomm, their reference devices. But these are the numbers they're getting. So very impressive single core score there for Geekbench for the new X2 Elite Extreme. However, that's not the whole story. One big thing is they've managed to get the clock speed peaking there up to 5 gigahertz, as I showed you in that previous slide, that compares to 4.1, 4.4, and 4.5 across those Mac devices that we looked at. So we can see here that Qualcomm has managed to achieve you know, very, very high clock speeds, which is good, but it also does hide the fact that maybe the uh, IPC is not as high as you'd think. In fact, if we divide the single core score by the number of gigahertz, we can actually see here that uh, 810 for the X2 Elite Extreme, which is actually slightly lower than the M4, but much better than the M3. So in terms of IPC, we can see it's better than the M3 in the same ballpark as the M4, but the M4 is still the champion. But they have managed to clock this up to a much higher clock speed, giving higher numbers in terms of absolute performance. And if we look at multi-core, well, we've got 16 core uh, MacBook Pro here with the M3 Max, 21,300. If we go to the M4 10-core MacBook Air, 15,000, up to the 14-core M4 Max MacBook Pro, 25,000. Then the Snapdragon X2 Elite Extreme with its 18 cores gives actually 22,000. So better than the M3, better than the M4, but doesn't quite reach the M4 Max. Okay, that's it. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the Snapdragon X2 Elite Extreme. Do let me know in the comments below. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.